the last section for chapter seven. And then I'll also include a couple more videos of kind of wrapping up chapter seven and um, giving you another example to work with. Um, but before we get to that, we want to cover our last section, and that's looking at um, our law of partial pressures, otherwise known as Dalton's law. So we first learned about Dalton back in uh, chapter three. Remember he had our first um, atomic theory based on some empirical evidence. Here's that English chemist. All right, so his um, law is actually fairly simple, straightforward. Okay. Um, but first, in order to understand his law, we want to know exactly what a partial pressure is. And this is the pressure of each gas in a mixture of gases. So it's its own individual pressure that's contributing to the whole. So remember, when we have a gas, basically we assume that gas molecules have no idea that any other gas molecules exist, that they are the only ones. They don't like interacting with other things. They, they're there. So if we have a combination of gases in a, you know, say a balloon, okay, air, excuse me, air is a combination of gases. You have nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and a, a bunch of other things. Okay, each gas in there, because it's not interacting with anything else, has its own partial pressure that it's contributing. Okay, and that contributes to the total pressure. So if we talk about partial pressure, we're talking about just the pressure of one of the gases in a mixture. Okay. <clears throat> now Dalton's law takes into account all of the partial pressures of a gas. And the, the great thing about Dalton's law is it's really, really simple. He basically says that the total pressure um, of a mixture of gases is just the sum of all of the partial pressures. Okay, so just addition. So our equation for Dalton's law, basically our P total, so capital P and then kind of a subscript of the word total, is going to be the partial pressure of one gas plus the partial pressure of a second gas plus the partial pressure of a third ga gas if you have it. And basically, however many gases you have, you just add those up. Okay. Now, this is an equation that you will want to know. Okay, it won't be given to you. But it's a fairly simple, straightforward um, equation. Okay, so let's work with an example of this.
So if we have a combination of gases, we have three gases. We have neon, argon, and nitrogen. And we have a certain pressure or partial pressure of each of those. We want to know what is the total pressure. Okay. Oops. Forgot to put that in there. What is the total pressure? Okay. So basically the only trick here to Dalton's Law is to make sure that all of your units are the same. Okay. So if one of these were given in atmospheres, you'd want to convert them all either to millimeters of mercury or convert them all to atmospheres. Um, unless the question specifies for a unit, it doesn't matter what you convert to. Okay? Just all that matters is that they are all the same. So if we look at this algebraically, okay, which may help some of you, our P total is going to be equal to the partial pressure of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of argon plus the partial pressure of neon. So all of our units are the same, so we can just plug in our numbers. So we have 235 millimeters of mercury plus uh, 852 millimeters of mercury plus 121 millimeters of mercury. We add all this up together. We have what? One, three, eight, two, seven, ten, one, nine, eleven, plus our carrier one. So we have 1208 millimeters of mercury as our final answer. So fairly straightforward, just adding up our individual partial pressures. In the next example, I'll kind of show um, all of chapter seven together and show the mole road and give a big example.